Welcome to the Tech Meme Ride Home for Monday, July 25th, 2022. I'm Brian McCullough. Today, NFL Plus arrives. And at the end of the show, we'll take a deep dive into sports rights as the great free radical in the streaming wars and the evolution in sports in general. In between that, people accuse Sam Bankman Fried of lowballing them. More details on the so called Apple Watch Pro. And if I told you there's a global shortage of fiber optic cable, would you even be surprised? Here's what you missed today in the world of tech. The NFL has launched its NFL Plus streaming service, offering a $4.99 per month tier and a $9.99 per month premium tier with full game replays, quoting The Hollywood Reporter. In a launch that NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is calling, quote, an important day in the history of the National Football League, The TV juggernaut is launching a streaming offering called NFL Plus on Monday, hoping to entice fans to subscribe with features built around smartphones and tablets. The first game available on NFL Plus will be the Hall of Fame game on August 4, featuring the Jacksonville Jaguars and Las Vegas Raiders. NFL Plus will have two subscription tiers, a base tier for $4.99 per month or $39.99 per year that includes live, local, and national primetime games on mobile devices and out-of-market preseason games on all devices. The service will also include home, away, and national game live audio for every game of the season and some NFL library programming. The NFL Plus Premium Tier will cost $9.99 per month or $79.99 per year and will add on full game replays and condensed game replays going back to 2009 and Coach's Film all ad-free. It will live within NFL.com and the NFL app, serving as an add-on service for regular consumers of NFL content. The service gives the league more direct economic exposure to its fan base, with NFL programming by far the most popular programming on linear TV and serving as a sale point for other streaming services like Amazon Prime Video and Paramount+. Plus. NFL+, Plus is being built around the live mobile game rights previously held by Verizon and Yahoo, which include local and some national games depending on where the user was geolocated. Verizon's rights ended after this year's Super Bowl. But the current product is being viewed as a starting point, the NFL says, with the league hoping to evolve the service over time. The NFL already has an out-of-market video offering that includes streaming. It's NFL Sunday Ticket. Those rights are currently on the market with digital companies like Apple and Amazon among the bidders alongside existing partners like Disney. NFL Sunday Ticket is available on all devices, including connected TVs and streaming sticks, with NFL Plus's in-market video and live audio really built around mobile consumption, end quote. More on all of this at the end of the show. Remember how Sam Bankman-Fried of FTX fame has been running around investing in distressed crypto platforms and projects as a way to prop up the overall crypto market, sort of how JP Morgan famously did all the way back in the 1907 crash on Wall Street? Well, another way to describe this sort of activity would be bottom feeding, playing the role of lender of last resort to scoop up assets on the cheap. Both things could be true at once. And people are noticing that, especially Voyager, quoting Bloomberg. On Friday, crypto billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried proposed a restructuring deal to Voyager publicly. Under the plan, Alameda, Bankman-Fried's trading firm, would buy all of Voyager's digital assets and digital asset loans, other than loans to Three Arrows Capital, in cash at market value. Meanwhile, FTX, his crypto exchange, would offer customers of Voyager an option to receive their share of claims by opening a new account at FTX. The Alameda FTX proposal is nothing more than a liquidation of cryptocurrency on a basis that advantages Alameda FTX. Lawyers for Voyager said in response to the bid in a court filing submitted Sunday, it's a lowball bid dressed up as a white knight rescue, end quote. Voyager will entertain any serious proposal made under the bidding procedures, but the bid from FTX and Alameda was, quote, designed to generate publicity for itself rather than value for Voyager's customers, they wrote. It undermined a competitive process, declared no value in Voyager platform and intellectual property, and ignored tax consequences, among other things, they said. We submitted what we think is a generous proposal, Bankman Fried said in an emailed comment. It appears that Voyager's consultants are attempting to stall out the process, increasing their fees. We feel for the customers who have lost significant funds and are waiting to receive those that remain, end quote.
In his newsletter this weekend, Mark Gurman has more details on the forthcoming so-called Pro Apple Watch that we should see released in a matter of months at this point. Sources say the new Pro Watch will have a roughly 7% larger screen, a new design, and a new case with more durable, probably titanium, to make it more rugged. Quote, As I've written several times, the new high-end Pro Watch will pack in a larger display, longer battery life, perhaps multiple days on one charge via the new low-power mode, and a body temperature sensor. There's more, though. I'm told that the high-end model is going to be a good bit bigger than the standard Apple Watch, big enough that it might only appeal to a subset of customers. The screen will be about 7% larger, and the device will have a fresh look, the first time the company has introduced a new Apple Watch design since 2018. It will be an evolution of the current rectangular shape and not circular. It also won't have those rumored flat sides for those who will undoubtedly ask. In terms of materials, the watch will have a more durable formulation of titanium to make it extra rugged. In a rare move, Apple issued a 59-page report to proclaim its leadership in health technology. The company this past week put out an in-depth report detailing every health and fitness-related feature it's launched to date for the iPhone and Apple Watch. The underlying message, we're a strong contributor in the health space and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. I've never seen Apple put out a report like this, and it raises the question of who the audience is supposed to be. In any case, the Apple Watch has a lot of potential as a health tool. The holy grail will be for the company to introduce a watch with a body temperature sensor, glucose monitor, and blood pressure checker. That will take time. The temperature feature should appear in this year's models, but the blood pressure technology probably won't arrive until 2025, and the glucose feature may not be ready until near the end of the decade." End quote. Intel plans to manufacture chips for Taiwanese chip designer MediaTek, the first major partnership that Intel has been able to score for its new Intel Foundry Services initiative, quoting the register. The American x86 giant is expected to announce MediaTek as a marquee customer for Intel Foundry Services Monday, more than a year after the chipmaker rebooted the business to compete with Asian foundry giants TSMC and Samsung as part of CEO Pat Gelsinger's comeback plan. MediaTek was the fourth largest fabless chip designer in 2021, larger than AMD, but smaller than Broadcom, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm. Its revenue was $17.6 billion last year, a 61% annual increase, largely thanks to smartphone chip sales. As well as Android handsets, MediaTek also designs chips for cars, Chromebooks, tablets, network products, plus IoT and smart home devices. MediaTek executive NS Tsai said the move, which will involve chips for smart edge products, is part of its multi-sourcing strategy. This means the company will continue to use rival foundries such as TSMC for other products, end quote. Want a better way to simplify your business finances across expenses, payments, and accounting? If so, Ramp could be a complete game changer for you. Ramp is a corporate card and financial software suite designed to help you save time and put money back into your pocket. Ramp gives finance teams unprecedented control and insight into company spend. With Ramp, you're able to create budgets, issue cards to every employee with limits and restrictions, and automate expense reporting so you can stop wasting time at the end of every month. Ramp's accounting software automatically collects receipts and categorizes your expenses in real time so you don't have to. The time you'll save each month on employee expenses will allow you to close your books in days, not weeks. Ramp saves you money. Businesses that use Ramp save an average of 3.3% the first year. And Ramp is easy to use. Get started, issue virtual and physical cards, and start making payments in less than 15 minutes, whether you have five employees or 5,000. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash techmeme. Ramp.com slash techmeme. That's R-A-M-P dot com slash techmeme. Before you book any brunch, you probably pour over lists and lists of reviews, right? So why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? With ZocDoc, you can see real verified patient reviews to help you find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. 
On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, get that mole checked out, or anything else. ZocDoc has you covered. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with just a few taps. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. I use them to find an optometrist just this month. I used to have perfect vision, but it's finally time to give up the ghost and admit that it's no longer true and get some glasses. So do like I did. Go to ZocDoc.com slash TechMeme and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many of them are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash TechMeme. ZocDoc.com slash TechMeme. A global shortage of fiber optic cable has driven up prices and lengthened the lead times, especially in Europe, India, and China, casting a shadow over global 5G rollouts, quoting the Financial Times. Europe, India, and China are among the regions most affected by the crunch, with prices for fiber rising by up to 70% from record lows in March 2021, from $3.70 to $6.30 per fiber kilometer, according to Crew Group, the market intelligence firm. Although the pandemic prompted some of the biggest tech and telecoms groups to slash their capex, there's been a surge in demand for internet and data services, leading to a shortfall in availability of the crucial but often overlooked material. Companies such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook owner Meta are expanding their data center empires to meet soaring demand, including laying vast international fiber networks under the ocean. Meanwhile, governments have set ambitious targets for the rollout of superfast broadband and 5G, both of which require vast quantities of fiber optic cable to be laid under the ground. Total cable consumption increased by 8.1% in the first half of the year compared with the same time last year, according to crew estimates. China accounted for 46% of the total, with North America representing the fastest growing region at 15% year on year. Underpinning the shortage are rising prices of some of the critical components that go into fiber optic technology, in which light is carried along flexible fibers with a glass core. There has been a shortage of helium, a crucial component in the manufacture of fiber optic glass, in part caused by plant outages in Russia and the U.S., which has caused prices of the element to increase by 135% over the past two years. Meanwhile, prices of silicon Tetrachloride, another key component of fiber production, have increased by up to 50%, according to Crew. In my professional career, I've never seen anything like this inflationary crunch, said Wendell Weeks, chief executive of Corning, the biggest producer of fiber optic cable in the world, which played a significant role in inventing the technology in 1970, end quote. Finally today, back to the sports story. Ever since I've been watching this space closely, I've wondered why sports don't just do their own apps and cut out the middlemen, like every media player has done recently. Best as I can tell, and longtime listeners know that I've poked at this a ton, it all comes down to the fact that as long as legacy media exists and sports is the number one remaining draw for live over-the-air content, the sports leagues know that they have the most leverage there, so they can make the most money there as long as it lasts. But is that finally changing, as we've reported on just at the start of the show today? Is the dam finally breaking? The New York Times has a look at how Apple, Amazon, and Google are trying to win live sports streaming rights by persuading skeptical leagues to switch from traditional TV and cable networks. Think about it. If you're a league, this would be the next logical step. Maybe you do deals with the streamers for the better part of this decade and learn what you can, and then maybe you strike out on your own, right? Quote, Emboldened by their deep pockets and eager to boost viewership of their streaming subscription services, Apple and Amazon have thrust themselves into negotiations for media rights held by the National Football League, Major League Baseball, Formula One Racing, and college conferences. They are competing to replace DirecTV for the rights to NFL Sunday Ticket, a package the league wants to sell for more than $2.5 billion annually, about $1 billion more than it currently costs, according to people familiar with the process. Eager not to miss out, Google has offered a bid from YouTube for the rights. Beginning in 2023, the people familiar with the offer said, The tech company's interest is a thrill for sports leagues and a terror for media companies that fear competition from rivals that collect tens of billions of dollars from dominant positions in other businesses. Last year, sports accounted for 95 of the 100 most viewed programs on television. The NFL Sunday ticket package, which shows out-of-market Sunday NFL games that aren't being shown on local television, 
is available because DirecTV chose not to bid. It has been losing as much as $500 million annually on the package, though it has also benefited from a reliable base of about 2 million subscribers. Apple is considered the front runner, according to a dozen people in the sports, media, and tech industries, but a final deal has been delayed by negotiations over a concurrent sale of NFL media assets, including the NFL Network, Red Zone Channel, and NFL Plus, a new subscription service that provides access to live games on mobile devices. Apple has made winning the package a priority. Tim Cook, Apple's chief executive, has met with league officials and influential team owners like Jerry Jones, who owns the Dallas Cowboys, and the Kraft family, who own the New England Patriots, according to three people familiar with the process. Apple declined to comment. Still, Amazon, ESPN Plus, and YouTube, which explored a bid for the rights in 2014, remain in the hunt some of these people said. Brian Rolap, the NFL's chief media and business officer, said in a statement that the league expects to finalize a deal in the coming months. A number of companies are in strong position to potentially land Sunday ticket, but we still have a ways to go in this process, Mr. Rolap added. Fans will still be able to access all the games on Sunday regardless of who wins the rights, but they will probably pay a premium to add the service to their Apple, Amazon, ESPN Plus, or YouTube service, some of the people said. It's not yet clear if that premium would be more or less than the $294 that DirecTV charges for a year they added. Apple and Amazon are trying to position themselves for a future without cable. Since 2015, traditional pay television has lost a quarter of its subscribers, about 25 million homes, as people traded cable packages for apps like Netflix and Hulu, according to Moffat Nathanson, an investment firm that tracks the industry. But the price of live sports rights is only projected to increase. The biggest media companies, including Disney, Comcast, Paramount, and Fox, are expected to spend a combined $24.2 billion for rights in 2024, according to data from Moffat Nathanson, nearly double what they spent a decade earlier. The fragmenting of decades-old distribution models has created an opportunity for Apple and Amazon. The companies want to expand deeper into media by selling subscriptions to Apple TV Plus and Amazon Prime. Besides containing their own exclusive shows and sports, those services double as portals, selling additional streaming offerings like Stars and HBO Max, which pay Apple and Amazon 15% or more of each subscription sold. Amazon generates more than $3 billion annually from third-party subscription sales, according to estimates by the investment bank BMO Capital Markets. To make the business model work, Apple and Amazon must attract more viewers, and sports are the most powerful draw in media. The companies may be willing to lose money on Sunday Ticket to expose new customers to other parts of their business, the same calculation that DirecTV historically made. The challenge for Apple and Amazon will be persuading somewhat skeptical sports leagues that they can produce high-quality broadcasts, flawlessly stream games for millions of concurrent viewers, and serve sports fans accustomed to flipping between games with a remote, not navigating to a new app. Their interest marks a departure for the streaming industry. For years, many executives agreed with Reed Hastings, the chief executive of Netflix, who said that his company was not interested in sports or news because it was watched just once, live, and never watched again. But many streaming companies are reconsidering as competition for subscribers intensifies, stock prices have tumbled, and profitability for many remains out of reach. Their newfound interest in sports was on display last Monday during MLB's Home Run Derby at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, where executives from Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook socialized with sports leaders, crashing a party historically monopolized by the television industry, end quote. Weird sort of payment snafu with Apple over my MacBook Air delivery this weekend. It's not resolved yet, so I'll save a rant for when and if they actually can't resolve this. Let's just put it this way for now. Apple does not make it easy to actually apply credits that they give you for trading in or recycling your old hardware. A $524 credit for my old iMac is currently missing. Anywho, hopefully no more on this because hopefully they'll fix it. But who knows? Talk to you tomorrow.